session. So we are at the third session of Global Teacher Training Program. And I believe my screen is visible to you all. Yes, Nada? Uh, yes, but uh, you can put it like, a, uh, a, it's great. Yeah. Okay. So we are at the module three and third day of the module three, which is blended learning so far we all have been discussing about. So we discussed about role model teachers, then we discussed about role of learning, what are the strategies, what structure is all about in blended learning, and how differently we can use the tools of blended learning for all our students out there. Now, there were a few questions we all were discussing yesterday. So we will discuss all those today, how we can implement blended learning. So implementation of blended learning, obviously, uh, like the way we were discussing in yesterday's session and day before that, that implementation of blended learning model, like we discussed, it's, why is it called blended? Because classroom uh, learning plus the online. So the combination of two things together, that's where blended learning comes in the picture. Whereas blended learning is a model in classroom where, uh, where obviously it is quite powerful method to more effectively and also per quite personalized. So as and when student required, which we studied more in structural format, structures of blended learning. So it has six structures where wherever it is required, we, a student can study online and they can study through documents, they can study and then when they require the uh, reference when they require personal guidance, then they can have face to face F to F guidance through blended learning. So then that way, teachers are planning their blended learning module for their students and for their classroom um, studies for their students and planning the structure, which are the best way of teaching to their students, best way to make them understand about every individual topic, whether it is about practical subjects or it's about theoretical subjects, but Yes, definitely through experiential learning, having blended learning in the picture. It's important to understand exactly what blended learning and by, you know, by the extension, personalized learning and how they actually correlate. So when we uh, discussed yesterday about all six uh, structures, if I remind you all, major league one, where face to face, where one was fixed module where we, um, one was absolutely free one where we can have blended um, the classroom model uh, where the documents and where it is required, where it is not required, but then free module, like if a child is interested, then they'll be coming and then through the feedbacks, we can understand better about that where they stand. But at the same time, we had one question, for, uh, one faculty yesterday, how we can in create more interest, how we can involve more students through blended learning method. So how do I blend my learning among uh, my students? You know, obviously there are number of options, number of processes, number of things all around, but then will that student be curious to know or what structure there has to be so that our student will be more interested in learning. They'll be more curious. They'll be more excited for those learning methods. So that's where blended learning plays an important role. Yes, while teaching them in the classroom, um, while teaching them uh, by online method, virtual method, while giving them certain blogs, certain articles to read, online discussions to attend, uh, conferences, webinars, where students can post and answer questions on these different platform to expand on topics in class. So the way they can understand where they are interacting, where they are giving their own inputs, because every opinion matters. That's what blended learning here. Uh, each one opinion matters. Something which is right for one may not be uh, right for the another one, right? But then their opinion, and that's how their thinking skills, their uh, design thinking, I would say, uh, develop. Right, so they start thinking because they are listening, they are observing, and then they are giving while writing through Quora, through blogs, through wikis, through different discussions, and then participating in such web quest where they are supposed to answer. So we need, we can guide our students whatever they have studied. They can come up with research projects. They can come up with um, research 
articles they can come up and that's how they will also learn you see in general classroom learning our students sometimes they are not very much aware of i'm sorry if uh, see we are all teachers here please so um, sometimes what happen uh, all our students they they know about the subject but then they don't know how to do the research and how many types of research are even there so what is the process of research what uh, the like quality research quantitative analysis then a mixed uh, analysis the different areas so student would be able to learn that too right so that they can write they can come up with better ideas they can they'll be able to express themselves more so they are student those who are introvert even but through such platforms which can bring things out from them onto this and obviously will be having better discussion better uh, network all across but definitely under the guidance of their faculty and there are many pre made uh, web quest also where obviously we teachers share among our students and then we discuss with them so we can see we can uh, assess them that you know after this and i'm sure every school nowadays being following the same platform where they take online test for their students so how when where and where they lie and then how we can and hold them to give them better direction if they have missed something if they could not understand something if they need any sort of uh, help which they are not able to understand so the teacher would know that where to guide their own students and from where to pick them up right so that's that's where these uh, things uh, on step on step format help them and also it is more about self learning way for all the students out there while we start guiding them they also understand that no i need to do more because if i don't do i'll miss this and i'll miss that so here i talk about this one which is very important uh, with that uh, yesterday's question just one second so one is digital storytelling i would give you two options when we talk about technology so using photo story 3 for uh, windows pc and all they are uh, on mobile phones as well so there, there is an application where you uh, start doing the digital storytelling the ideas when we talk about but then you can express you can you can see yourself so through photos and collaborating all the pictures together and then that, that that's a app which helps students and to uh, you know um, uh, express their ideas to express what is there in their mind sometimes they are unable to speak sometimes they are unable to express but these digital storytelling uh, apps which helps them it's just a kind of a creative uh, way to um, you know build a, or help a child to understand more so uh, we help them in playing up with seeds such application which nowadays students are doing anyway so why not doing something which is different and unique which they enjoy which helps them in coming up with their things their emotions which they are facing even and also another application which is i movie for ipad 2 so yeah these two areas where we can help students where they can involve themselves more and they'll be more expressive what they are going through with uh third uh, fourth is flipped classroom now this was the question when we were talking yesterday so students complete the entire learning and lecture part outside the classroom so if you can see before the goal so in the bottom students prepare participate in the class activities they they are actually preparing working that what all they will be doing in the classroom today or what all questions they uh, they would be having why because they have worked earlier they seen them experience something now they have queries now they have stuff or they would know that you know this is what they will be doing then during the classroom the students practice applying those key concept because you have given them a task but then they would know that this is what they are doing and then they look for the feedback from the faculty at the same time right so during that with the help of our faculty they are they are on to it they are trying to work upon something whereas after that you know after that students check their understanding and extend their learning so then peer uh, group they can have a discussion uh, with their friends and colleagues or probably parents seniors um, or siblings or else they go online they look for other website they look for other conferences they look for other material documents or the material which has been shared by the teacher for them that this is the topic but then the extended module extension of something you know the next level of something which help them for different way of earning 
uh, learning uh, to understand better or more about that particular topic. So then they do kind of a research because they, they would, that's how the curiosity comes in the picture that, okay, this is what happened, but what next after it? So the flipped classroom technique is actually helping students a lot. Even um, when we are at home and teaching our students online on a virtual mode, um, even then, so while having face-to-face -face sessions among our students, just uh, while having us face-to-face uh, -face sessions among our students, also at the same time um, with uh, the one-on-one -on -one session, uh, which is again online, or the peer group session, and also the breakout rooms uh, for for their group discussions and everything, where they are able to express their ideas more, right? Now the sixth part, which is again important, models where stimulation and mind tools plays a picture. Obviously, we all are connected with too many technology out there, too many things which are actually distracting or distractions for all our students, obviously. So we know that through AI, something which you haven't, you don't, you're, you're not interested your, your child to see, but still, if you have clicked even once, you will keep on getting all those things again and again, right? So. And um, so the, under these distraction, how can you interact, uh, how can you create uh, these sessions more interactive with these technologies? So when I talk about, uh, you know, uh, with all these things, which we discussed yesterday as well. So uh, stimulation and mind tool where you are involving the child more, where these stimulations are interactive technologies where students can move, change components without risk of messing up with something or getting hurt. So they are connected with something, they are talking, they are sharing, and their opinions matter, their ideas matter. So there should be someone to be, you know, to uh, to hear them out, to discuss things, or when we talk about breakout rooms, rooms so where they are discussing and then coming up with conclusion, research projects, small concepts, they're creative, interactive, innovative things of every chapter where they are learning in um, in the groups and teachers or group or project managers being divided among you know where they are guiding and helping students out so such things actually help them where we are guiding them but then they are at the same time they are enjoying doing it also right so such mind tools also allow students to show concept they learn so whatever they have learned so far whatever they have read so far through their documents links what have been shared by the uh, teacher in any of the structured format. But then while uh, playing such uh, activities, by involving themselves in such activities, by interacting with their colleagues and talking about, they all come on the same page because they are, in, they are living that particular thing, right? They're enjoying that. Uh, just one second, I see this red mark, which I'm not liking. So I'll share the screen once again, one minute. Now, three ways to implement blended learning. Again, first and foremost, which is again very important and a fruitful, which is which has been um, helping out uh, the teachers uh, among uh, among their students, is flipping and blending uh, with videos. So flipping and uh, blending videos, where we uh, understood just just the last one. Yeah. So this flipped classroom technique, whereas you know. Now, this flipping and blending videos among students. So while teaching, teaching, speaking, like I'm speaking, you might be getting bored. But if I'm sharing a video with you all, create a kind of interest, which I will be doing soon. But yeah, create a kind of interest, a kind of involvement, because visuals actually attracts all of us, right? And it is very easy for them to remember. Obviously, it's difficult when we talk about senior classes, but then um, something we need to try keeping something where they, they, they are involved, where they enjoy, where something is catching their eye, you know. So th that one thing is required, which brings their attention at the same time, gives them a little kind of a relax from reading and, you know, grasping things, just, just kind of relax and gives them a little kind of a happiness at the same time. So that involvement is required. Um, then second is game-based learning. and practice as homework alternatives. So the kind of uh, what we've been discussing, that kind of activities, kind of projects, kind of assessment, which has some sort of activity where uh, game, uh, where involvement, where team uh, is required. 
that involved and that also gives uh, you know comes up with a good practice because practice is what makes the man perfect so students actually easily involve they compete with each other and they learn that way so they, these sort of activities are also you know quite uh, good when when we uh, talk about the ways of uh, learning three ways uh, of learning right so uh, it can be anything so whether we give them kind of mobile application to um, play and come up with or kind of um, um, like we are having one this spin wheel uh, nowadays in uh, IIU which is going over so there are a number of questions through the spin, the spin wheel where students are involved and all the questions are related to the chapter so when the students are you know connected with it you are asking them the funny questions they are happy questions um, the interact you know, in, interaction among all of them and then they are trying to uh, help each other at the same time because oh, uh, i'm so sorry but then no, 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 no. i request you all to be on mute please yeah so the game based learning where they are playing enjoying and kind of happening activity at the same time, they're all online and they're not being asked to be on mute because this is one thing in the research when we were discussing, uh, I was personally uh, doing this research and was talking to students. So they are not opening up their cameras, the teachers said they don't speak, they don't answer. But with such activities, they, they are all unmuted, they're all happy, they're involved and they're learning at the same time when they are asked to, you know, play something, the competition because they they've been missing their colleagues they've been missing their uh, friends now uh, with this uh, interactive model where they're playing but at the same time the teacher is trying to make them learn something understand something so this is uh, this uh, sort of kind of interactive activities where a uh, kind of a whiteboard format where they share the link on the group and ask them to write something what they have learned today at the end of the day or write a message for their best uh, friend or write a message for the teacher how was the session today so which also provide them the same time kind of feedback uh, too so yeah that and that actually helps uh, to both uh, to the teacher whether the students understood or not or to the students as well where they are involved and something they are where they're enjoying so with the enjoyment obviously we can make sure that they have learned something at the end of the day right now the third point where discussions uh, comes in the picture beyond the school day and space so obviously in the school we teachers are there uh, their friends colleagues are there then the seniors are there the juniors are there a number of competitions cultural activities sports and whatnot lab experience and many many things but whereas when we talk about blending hardly a day in a school or probably everything is going online so that space they're not getting that uh, to discuss their their mind frame is not that right but then how can we bring that on a virtual format and how we can uh, involve them so those certain so certain discussion um, other than school days but then giving them and keeping them all onto, onto the same pace and keep on discussing with them that yes, they are missing those school days, but then what space, um, what mind state they are in because then they, they're not being heard. They've been only asked to study. They've been only asked to um, work. They've been only asked to, uh, you know, um, keep on reading and learning things. And uh, they've been discussing, but the discussion beyond all these things, the discussion beyond everything next which is might be required uh, or might not be with everyone but that sort of discussion is important where blended learning comes in the picture while teaching while speaking and while uh, making them understand but out of the box if we come up with a question with them like having a empty um, vessel kind of a thing and ask them to pour ask them just not the name but write whatever you come up with on that whiteboard and all the students what they are going through with they put up, probably they're putting up all the chits there we don't know who said what but then they, we can know easily that yes this is what our students are actually going through with so there's certain discussions which are required but uh, in their own space in their own um, you know comfort zone 
So there are three uh, ways where we, we are actually happily involving our students very easily, interacting in, uh, with them. And to be honest, making sure that all the students are participating, everyone, not because of pressure, but they are curious, they are happy, they, are, they really want to, they've been waiting for it, right? So there's such things which they all have been looking for. Now, uh, the first part we discuss, like flipping and blending with videos. So benefit of uh, having students uh, watch video outside of class is that if uh, uh, it reserves the class time for discussion and peer collaboration and obviously moves the teacher to more of a facilitator in the classroom. So if they have watched already, they discussed, now they are coming up with more questions. Now they have uh, more ideas, they have uh, more discussions and then reverse, absolutely, right? Because earlier what we used to do, we used to give them in the homework, that this is what we have, you know, we already taught. Now we'll, we are sharing a video for them to uh, watch at home. But now it's absolutely upside down if we talk about we, the classroom is virtual and uh, you see, and in the camera, what we are reading or we are watching the video and giving them material. So it's not only uh, just the video video, but the uh, other reading material or uh, documents as well through web frame. So these, these, those were traditional format, but now we are providing the video, we are providing the material on a uh, uh, prior basis that they go through with and then absolutely flipping the entire model upside down. And then the teacher is interacting with the student and helping them and guiding them. So that's, th this is again, a um, better understanding um, uh, with the traditional format to the lecture format nowadays online. So um, where teachers have instant feedback and can better understand how a student are actually learning and providing more personalized instruction because whether the student would be uh, actually understood things or whether the child didn't or what, what, whatever they are facing, what not they are facing or anything, right? So, yeah. Also, uh, the few pointers which I have mentioned here for all of us to understand. So these tools are actually great for the teachers to create lessons, chapters, their, uh, their uh, framework, their syllabus uh, for them to understand better and but also actually provide the opportunity for the students to create lessons that can, can, that can be shared with their uh, other students as well. So kind of experiential. So what we have taught in one class, sometimes we share those experiential learning among other students as well, that this is what happened and that's how. Probably from our own experience, we are, uh, we are more experienced and now we are uh, implementing it to the next, next class that so, so that we do not make the same mistake again. Um, third point where we say tools have both provided a lot of authentic learning, problem solving and critical thinking obviously and also collaboration like in the uh, uh, last slide we just last last slide we discussed that there are many things all together many but then which brings them where, where they're interacting where they're talking where they're involving where they are um, discussing where they are so somewhere around they are trying to express themselves and this is what nowadays is actually lacking behind and real life problems so which is bringing or uh, which is actually giving them kind of authentic learning problem solving attitude so far they all been learning more onto textbooks but yes i believe that these areas are little technical for the teachers because so far they've been teaching all the traditional subjects all that traditional way of teaching but are they really learning those? Uh, are they really understanding? So they, with these uh, creative ways, we can make sure that our students will definitely shine bright because their critical thinking is improving. Out of 100, there are two students and they are good. But out of 100, if they are 90 are good, 92, 95 are good, that means we are teaching them in the right manner, right? So that, that, that's how we are bringing, uh, you know, their thinking uh, is increasing, their process is increasing, they know, the, and they're collaborating, they're doing projects, they're doing, uh, they're connecting with other colleagues, they're talking and uh, many things. So they know that team building is also building up, whereas they're now students, you see that from the nuclear family even sometimes, so they, they, they believe in themselves more and then they, uh, they, they love their own time, you know, me time, and then they can work only within themselves when it comes to other friends, colleagues, they face challenges. But with certain activities that 
peer group learning will also help them and team building will also help them leadership will also increase sportsmanship will also increase and the many things which will help them so these excuse me so these tools will help them for overall development of the child so this is how blended learning actually i believe plays an important role yes there are little challenges as well because classroom study is classroom study but when we flip it other way round yes then it is helpful because not every day we are teaching in the classroom we can sometimes teach in the garden as well we are giving them kind of a practical experience even if the schools are open so we can take them out and see if they that's a, um, a biology subject and then we are teaching them botany we can take them to the practical uh, place and then teach them and tell them things probably if you are teaching economics and then taking them to a festival probably in a uh, in a fest out there and then talking to other stalls and everyone so kind of experiential learning which they are getting straight away from the market right and which registers to their mind easily so this is one of our main goal as teachers to provide opportunities which empower our students to take more control and drive their own learning so which actually helps them in self learning mode um, also helps them in uh, self learning you know self rating um, thing where they assess themselves where the teachers assess them uh, on time to time basis where they themselves understand that yes this is what they are going through where this is where they are lying in this is what they need to learn more and this is what they need to understand or she is doing better so then even when they compare they understand and they are ready to help each other they are not hiding because they are more into group task they are more learning together they are more grasping things together so such things which brings uh, you know these things comes from within so that's how and then these things goes from the teacher to all their students and that's how from them to their uh, students or their kids too so that process uh, you know grows uh, further i'm so sorry i've been speaking but uh, any questions so far so i'm open for it anyone anyone of you would like to ask anything i've been speaking constantly no dr prachi you are speaking great because in your speech we have all uh, practice and theory so great okay so uh, shall i go further yes yes <clears throat> great you see dr kalpana and me are looking at you the whole time and listen yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah these are the few uh, traits which are quite helpful now if we talk about the second part of it you know game based learning and practice so when we talk about game based learning practice as homework alternatives so you can use these to you know differentiate homework and have students create something more personalized and beneficial for their own learning and then share these new resources with other students in class so if you're giving them kind of activities ruby cube you're giving them certain board games to play obviously they involve their digital games to play or asking them to do that as a homework and giving them some sort of a task which involves them which involve their thinking process which involve their mind somewhere and that's how they're building up that's how they are trying their uh, also at the same time they are learning of failure as well you know because that is also very important for a student to learn failure nowadays they are not used to it so uh, all these activities which differentiate and which helps them so such areas where they do kind of a self learning mode and uh, learning things from one or the another way which builds their own understanding by themselves is also helpful and yes game based learning is always good because every child love to play right and if we are giving them a kind uh, of game to play why not they'll be more than happy and you know crazy about it so such things we need to play around where we can make our kids better involved and happy to be a part of something which they are actually looking for uh, whereas we would know that we are making them learn something out of it but yes through these activities they'll be learning something out of it now the third part of it discussions beyond the school day and space so it is a quick and a easy way to connect with students and expand where and when learning occurs right so 
like we are giving them certain tasks and giving them a kind of a discussion rooms conferences different conversations or anything but this is anyway we even if we are teaching them it's just a quick and easy to give them a kind of a group and give them a title to discuss about and um, you know onto their own comfort zone where they can express themselves and idea is that student can do something of these activities outside of the classroom period you know? so this is not related to something what they are doing in the class but then something absolutely out of the box but yes related indirectly related to something what they have studied so far which helps them to uh, think which helps them uh, beyond that to understand because something which comes from within again i'm saying so probably even if they are study uh, studying about uh, let's say history there are many students who are not interested in history and they say why am i reading about akbar is is really when i mean i'm not interested in history or i'm not interested what was his life story so but then yes it is important because it's our history so if we are coming up with some sort of a title and which involves students obviously they'll be involved they'll be doing research not mandatorily but yes if that is a part of an activity definitely and then they'll be coming up with their better idea let's say if you give them kind of play to you know do on that so there will be students who would be interested more in history there will be students who will be interested more in um um theater there will be more students who are interested more in costume so they all will be sitting together and discussing the entire story and that's how uh, it registers there in mind that okay this is what a uh, Uh, Akbar's story was all about, right? And then teachers can plan activities, other activities that which provide opportunities to engage all the students all together with their peers, right? So um, these are kind of things, the discussions where we are trying to make them understand things in other format, other way, which involved all of them, right? And where which are easiest way to grasp, observe things, and uh, intake things. and also express at the same time which is important uh, anyways now this is uh, something which is important so how to create a blended learning e learning strategy uh, as uh, rashmi asked yesterday so which we say clearly identify the blended learning courses objective so what do you want your students to learn about what do you want your students, at the end of the day through this particular chapter what do you want from a child to you know uh, take home from this uh, particular chapter so plan the learning objectives of it then create a blended learning course outline and syllabus to keep your learners motivated and on track so you plan the entire structure that this is the chapter for this we can have these are the activities we can have that's how we um, our students can involve um i focus more on um, learning objectives and then uh, then i play my um, play with my students in totally uh, opposite manner i do not read the first chapter i start reading from the last and start playing so that they automatically learn and understand and then we start reading the chapter so which kind which is kind of a revision for them you know so we do activities at initial stage we uh, do we do interactive session at initial stage we talk about it we all give our inputs at initial stage whereas uh, then we start reading uh, the chapter which uh, actually gives uh, you know brings the kind of a revision uh, and helps them all to you know revise it or uh, or memorize it in a better manner oh okay this is uh, what oh okay ma'am this was related to this activity right this is what we did okay so that's kind of keep on reminding them in their mind and also keep that on track so uh, while keeping your learners uh, this also keeps them you know uh, all the learners be motivated and keeping them on track where they keep on thinking all right this is what we or probably if we have showed them a kind of a movie related to it and then they think oh okay yes this was there so this is how it happened that bahubali movie let's say so okay and even if you are reading a book now or so now we realize oh okay yeah this is how so they were they were doing this they were doing oh this this is not the reality but this is how it obviously so they have actually presented in it absolutely oh they've created a hype of it but it's not like that so you know that that connect student that involves student also motivate students like how harry potter did so uh, there there are many books out there and there are movies as well series so those movies obviously has been 
attracting students and they've been watching that again and again. They all have the series of it. There are the many readers too. They've been reading Harry Potter books. So, but then they have watched movie too. So the, now what, it's just kind of a reminder. It's something which is there in their mind. It's connected, uh, something connecting, which is pinching out in their brain. Okay, so they were, that's how they were going to see the treasure. This is the uh, uh, thing and that's the stake and everything, right? Now the third point, where de determine the blended learning courses level of interactivity. So once they do in self-learning mode, uh, interaction is again important. So with the help of feedback, group discussions, presentations, public speaking also uh, comes in the picture, communication skills also improves, their body language also improves and whatnot. So this interactivity at the same time helps them a lot in terms of understanding, right? So, yeah. Now, integrate group collaborative activities. So once the discussions uh, happens, you can have group activities for them for such tasks. So if you can divide them into different tasks, give them one, create one project manager and have them and have one as a leader and then give different, different individual groups a task and then see the competition that what all everyone is coming up with and then kind of results here. So then they look for, no, I don't want to be in this group next time. I'll be with such, uh, I'll be going with X, I'll be going with Y, I'll be with A. So have, and then they keep on changing the group members as well uh, in between. So let's see how much they remember or are they sharing from one group team to the other group team as well, which brings a kind of trust and loyalty among them too. So these, these such activities, which kind of a kind uh, collaborative activities among students, if they are learning things, they're living things, even the moral values which we have been talking about, but then they'll be living all those ethics at the same time, which are actually lacking behind when we talk about the corporate sector too. But then if we are teaching our students, why are we teaching them? What for? It's all this entire learning, learning, learning. At the end of the day, if we remove L from this learning, it is all about earning it at the end of the day. I believe everyone would agree with it, right? Now that earning, for that earning procedure, there are certain things which are very important and we learn those things only when we work. We experience that, right? And while experiencing, why not if we start learning those things, before, um, learning those things when, uh, when we start with it. So that's how these collaborative activities actually helps us at, uh, in terms of better understanding. The fifth part of it, where we develop communication and feedback guidelines. So obviously, once we have done all these areas, we can have better com communication. Either we can have straight away feedback sometimes. We can have different, different ways of feedbacks for them to understand probably multiple choice questions. We can have um, one liner to be asked. Then we can have our testimonials to us. We can have uh, their straight feedbacks. We can have random feedback without names so that we can understand that how much they have learned. And then we can also come up with assessments for them, uh, which is the last point, but yeah. And at the end, then we can compile a list of all the resources and references and provided them. So this chapter includes, because obviously, let's say in the class of 10 groups are there and those 10 people have created presentations of that chapter. And that chapter has, uh, one chapter has 10 areas and we have divided it into 10 groups. Now that resource thing, obviously under supervision of the faculty, but then those 10 presentations will help. Those 10 videos will help all the students to remember, remember memorize things because all those 10 groups have shared their presentations in front of everyone. And then obviously the other 10 mem uh, groups, nine groups have given their feedback on each presentation. So they would remember because they have watched that thing. They've shared their idea, their opinions about that particular presentation, obviously. So all those fine uh, work, all the compiled thing we can share among our students. Anytime, even in the time of their assessment, their exams, they can refer those things to very easily. And created at the end, then you can have very effective assess assessment plan for all of them to understand in a different manner. That, and I'm sure that this way, they will be able to learn things in a better manner. They, this way, they'll be able to grasp things in an absolutely unique way. And they'll be coming up with very unique and different answers because this will develop. It's kind, it is going to be a kind of overall development for all of them, right? Now, uh, elements of blended learning. So there are three different elements of blended learning. 
first is technology, second is trainer, and third is content. So when we talk about that, today the blended learning is a mix of following elements, which is trainer, technology, and content. Now, so um, we have been talking about technology, we've been talking, talking about teaching process, what we have been teaching and how we will be teaching all our students. If you talk about content, so there are different ways and policies where we'll be teaching in the process of blended learning, the structure of blended learning, helping all our students to understand things in an absolutely unique and different manner. So all these things, areas where they're involved, they're interacting, uh, they're, um, they're learning into an absolutely different way, where teacher is involved in new, new things coming up, not the traditional way, only the chapter what they're learning, but unique way out of it where they're involved more, you know. So such ways are actually very important where to make or uh, understand our students in absolutely unique way out there. And the end of the day, uh, if you talk about concluding the entire uh, process of blended learning, of three days process, what we all have been learning all about. So blended learning methodology can be called as hybrid learning as well, and is effective if the cases are analyzed well and their implementation is managed with their greater of control. Obviously, and that can only be done by the teachers for their students. Blended learning actually provides um, flexibility in learning for both students and teachers too. And also it improves the efficiency of learning process as well at the same time. So yes, it is a, a hybrid model, but it helps. And it also helps them to understand things into an absolutely unique and a different uh, manner, which um, gives them better understanding, which gives them um, kind of a unique way where they can register things in themselves and in, into an easiest format or something like that. Yeah. So this is all from my side. Anyone would like to ask anything? I'm open for the questions. We had three days, great session, uh, I believe. Three parts of blended learning, involvement, understanding. Any one of you, if you would wish to. Or probably you can share your experience how the sessions were. Uh, I'm really satisfied with the session, with the whole three days, uh, Dr. Prachi, <laughs> to make it really uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, if uh, no one don't uh, because uh, somebody don't really know what is blended learning and after these three days uh, i think uh, without uh, without working that and uh, uh, learning the first time uh, ha can have a, a whole picture about blended learning and uh, if you ask me which session for me was the best, uh, I will say that all three were excellent. And uh, as I said before, uh, really, we have uh, many examples from the practice. Uh, yesterday, we learned all the models. Today, uh, we talk about the elements uh, and, uh, as I say, and from the beginning and from the conclusion. Uh, the main elements are the content, trainer, technology, and how to implement it in our teaching, in our classroom. So uh, with gamification, with all methods, and uh, I think that really, uh, I, I don't have questions. <laughs> I, I, for me, I said, excellent. And I learned a lot new things. That's great. That's great. Now, um, I anyone else would like to say anything? I have, I have posted a question. Rashmi here. Yeah, Rashmi. So I have a question here. How do you think we can develop fine motor skills of students through blended learning? That's a great question, uh, Rashmi. Obviously, to the initial stage, it is a little difficult, whereas we've been asking students, but again, uh, you know what our students, kids basically, when we talk about motor skills, been um, teaching our students and something, how do they observe? Because what we do, I'm, I'm also a young mother, students, kids basically observe more. 
So what we have been doing, they'll be observing and doing the same. We need to do kind of activities. We need to do more uh, involvement of students or kids, I would rather say, uh, kind of videos where they, they watch more so that they would want again. Like if I talk uh, this, uh, I was there in one school, G kids and little uh, kids out there. So they're all playing one game, which they all have been watching online. And uh, with one act, uh, one uh, Thing which was there on television, pop pop game, something which has number of dots and colors out there, and every student was having it because they've been asking their parents uh, to have that toy for all of them, right? Why? Because they have seen that in the television. It's it wasn't there in the school, it was nowhere, but then they have watched that on television. So their observation skills are very very uh, good. What we have been doing, we need to do some sort of certain activities in terms of. Um, making them learn and observe better. So that sort of activities are required. Not just asking them to do, just do that. And then they, they will repeat it because they really want to do. That's a kind of a monkey stage for kids, right? So that's how their motor skills develop. And we need to come up with activities where they can observe. Certainly we all need to do those activities because that is how they will be copying us. So if we are playing with clay, if we, are, we have watched a video and then we all are sitting together and making this, a child would be expecting their parents to sit next to him and do such activities because they would require uh, someone elder to sit next to them. Or if they are playing with uh, uh, sand um, or probably they're uh, you know, making the finger in, on the sand um, sheet. So they, you can ask the parents to have that sand in a packed uh, zip uh, pouch where they can ask their kids to uh, write A, B, C, so which develop uh, the skills uh, uh, among them. So there's certain activities which we need to involve uh, through this uh, for them, but certainly we all need to do at the same time so that they can observe and do again. And I'm sure if a teacher is doing, because uh, that's how uh, I've been looking few videos to teach my own son. Uh, where uh, he's very young, he's just four, four and a half and he's learning, but I read, I go and I watch certain videos which I adapt and then help my child to understand and do. And I only think which I even uh, have been doing, and this is what I uh, read in this uh, module when I was learning for myself, that nothing uh, is required. You just start doing yourself. Nowadays, how kids are learning mobile phone even. So they're learning mobile, uh, they're learning through mobile phone because uh, they've been observing everyone do, using mobile phone and that is how they have observed and doing it at the same time. So such activities are required for them. I believe I have another question in the chat. Um, how emotional question of a learner can be catered through in blended learning? Very well asked and Kate so. So yeah, that's a nice question again. Uh, emotional uh, question, obviously uh, there are many things and then there are many distractions at the same time for students uh, uh, on an online mode which and where they face a number of challenges. But you see, once they are involved in activities, once they have team, their people around them, uh, kind of a different activities with uh, different team members, not in their comfort zone, but also out of their comfort zone. Like I said, Today, I am uh, with um, you all uh, in the group, but all of a sudden, if I have been asked to change my break room uh, to another break room, and am I sharing things out uh, with other team members? No, if not, that loyalty, um, trust, and now I'm trying to adjust there as well. So such activities, such involvements, and uh, my expressional uh, things, my experiential things will help me in expressing myself. So when we talk about these blogs, articles, videos, writing, activity, with the involvement. And also when we talk about these games, so these Ruby cube, where their, brains, their brain is being used for something where they're using certain activities, they're using their brain for doing certain game, they were, they're involving themselves. So the emotional is more, uh, is not that uh, comes in the picture where their uh, technical mindset comes more in the picture, they, where they, um, they uh, you know, kind of their brain uh, plays an important role. So that's where students not thinking, they're more thinking in terms of solving. So then they comes up more into a, I would rather say critical think, uh, thinking, uh, increases better. So they start thinking and solving things and also problem solving things 
comes in the picture. So they start solving things by themselves. With all such activities, overall helps them in better understanding and then they, their problem solving techniques comes in the picture. So they don't focus more on problem, they focus more on solution. All right, this is what happens. Okay, fine, but what next? What can we done out of it? No, what can uh, what can we do to uh, come over it? So this solution oriented uh, a child becomes more rather than focusing more on uh, any sort of problem, even if they are facing anything. And then after looking all such videos, answers, blogs, articles, wikis, if they are writing, they are expressing. So they are more expressive and they can easily ask the faculty, their mentor, that we would require, please, we require an F and F session with you. They can send a request for which we can have chat box. We can have a center where we can request them that we are available. Your mentors are always available in that time, time duration, and then you can speak to them. So they can have booking, they can have slots booked with their mentors and all. So I believe that way it is the easiest way uh, to uh, more involvement because we see the teenage and for, in fact um, other than uh, once they, that age from teen to uh, when they you know puberty age so their mental physical hormonal changes goes around and then they are unable to but once they are uh, physically they are more involved in work their mental ability is more involved in something they come up with better so they automatically becomes more solution oriented right so I believe that helps you uh, to understand better Anyone else? But well, that was a good question, actually. Thank you, thank you, Ashley and Dr. Prachi. You have explained each and every questions very well. So, but I just want to correct one thing: the, uh, the critical thinking, creative thinking, and the psychomotor skills. They are the cognitive part of learning. So they are not uh, connected with the emotional. Actually, as far as emotional learning is concerned. I just want to add on my knowledge and information. So, uh, as the emotional learning is concerned, so uh, uh, our instructor can be utilize some virtual uh, reality, we are uh, visual, uh, some augmented reality visual, and they can uh, do some uh, uh, responsibility and assignment to the student, like uh, to develop a leadership quality and to develop a co op cooperativeness. So, some group activity must be there. And some uh, storytelling. Storytelling is very much important for development of emotional learning. So these are some strategies. And as far as blended learning is concerned, you are excellent. You have really explained very well all the components and all the aspects of blended learning, except the tools and techniques. Tools and techniques, they are, they are vast platforms and applications uh, at the uh, uh, different stages uh, from primary to uh, upper primary graduation or post graduation. So there are many applications and software is also there. But uh, for this uh, global teacher training program, because every type of learners are here in this group. So it's a very, very, very good effort you have done. And we are really thankful to you for taking this session. And uh, happily, happily and uh, uh, really uh, we are thankful and uh, would like to express our gratitude. Uh, uh, that uh, you have created interest in uh, blended learning to each and everyone. Actually, me and Nada, we have already taken many sessions on this this topic. So, but still, we are learners. We wanted to learn each and everything. Even in the uh, IIU Philippines, I took the whole session of the future of 2021. So I have explained each and everything there. But still, I was shocked somewhere when you have uh, taught some new and unique things so that was really amazing thank you so much thank yes you. yes yes i agree with dr uh, kalpana because uh, we are really involved in many events uh, many trainers teachings but dr prachi you gave yes. your notes and you gave us really new things like dr kalpana said thank you thank you yeah so much uh, to all of you and uh, again we will be meeting once again next week with our new mentor so still then please stay tuned stay connected and uh, this is this is really very important so i would request you all to please please do uh, keep on joining the sessions for the certificates thank you thank you so much to all of you thank you to you also